So we spoke with the GMD of the NNPC yesterday, and he reiterated the fact that market forces now determine um, the price of petrol and what it means to how much you now pay for petrol per liter. Joining me now is economist Ayo Unugbogi and also Ambrose Igboke, who is chairman in Ogo State Chapter of the Guild of Public Affairs Analysts of Nigeria. Gentlemen, thank you so much for finding time to join us. We have just about 10 minutes for this conversation, so let's um, throw in as many as we can within the short time. Mr. Onigbogi, let me begin with you. What is happening here? You know, the NFPC says is market forces. Is it the price of crude oil or exchange rate? All right, let's get to Mr. Ambrose then. Uh, we'll get back to Mr. Onigbogi shortly. Mr. Ambrose, what do you think is happening here? Um, we seem to have conflicting um, uh, uh, explanation from two different institutions. The NNPC says it's um, the price of crude oil, but then the market, independent marketers uh, are saying that it's how much a dollar is in Naira as we speak. I, I think they, they are confused because the premise for which the removal of first subsidy was based, the horrid removal of first subsidy was predicated on mere profiteering without regard for the welfare. It was not, um, uh, will I say, trans let me use the word, it was not in the interest of the Nigerian masses. That's, that's what happened. How do you mean? The NNPC itself so as a limited two different business? Well, the NNPC changed, changed to a very limited company in the name, nomenclature, but it handles the monopoly of importation of the product. There is no deregulation. You are saying you are deregulating on one hand, then you are handing over monopoly to somebody on the other hand. What kind of food economics is that? How can you say you are deregulated the sector on the other hand? You still have the NNPC, the sole right to import refined products. Why did you not allow other, uh, other marketers to go out there, source for their products, if they can see it in a cheaper way, in a cheaper price, and bring it in? So uh, you can see the dishonesty in the implementation of this uh, new regime in terms of selling uh, petrol to Nigerians. And so it doesn't add up. And that is why NNPC is giving a different reason, why the marketers are giving a different reason. I have always maintained in all my, you know, interventions about this matter that the subsidy scam is there. It has to be removed. We all agree on that. There's no, there's no, uh, you know, a discordant tune about that. But the problem re remains that there are some certain, you know, initiatives you need to bring on board before you go out to wholly remove the subsidy. Because we, what there's what we call root cause analysis. Why did we even introduce subsidy in the first place? We introduced subsidy in the public because we are producers of petroleum products. And we produce those products. We had refineries where we are refining locally to meet our local consumption. And then all of a sudden, we could no more refine locally. And we had to start importing from foreign countries. And the government said, we have failed. We needed to have provided a refined products for local consumption because we cannot do this. The price parity, disparity between what we are importing and what we are ought to sell locally, we will subsidize it. That was where the issue of subsidy came. So if we attain refining capacity, well, there's no need for a subsidy. That is where we're supposed to start from. Now, we had people who had old stock yesterday just by mere announcement of price increase. People who had old stock were selling in a new price. NNPC still determines the cost of petroleum in this country. So what kind of subsidy are the regulation are we running? So it doesn't add up. And that is why whatever NNPC is saying, and it might say on the other hand, it's not adding up. Well, let's talk about um, what the GMD of the NNPC is actually saying. According to him, with the forces of demand and supply, we might see the prices come down and go up in time. Uh, but we are in a situation where government seems to have taken its hand off, you know, determining what the price will be. Who takes up the responsibility to ensure that marketers do not take advantage of consumers this time? The government took up, uh, they removed their hand, but there is a, somebody is determining the price of petroleum products in Nigeria as it stands, especially at the pump price. And that company is called NNPC Nigeria Limited. According to them, they decide the price for their own filling stations, not for others. And that's no, why. And that is so important. That's why, for instance, in Lagos, just a minute, for instance, I bought fuel 
499 Naira at Bovas filling station. It's different from what other filling stations are selling it, as high as 567. So the NNPC did not decide for Bovas how much fuel is sold per liter. Can you repeat that? Well, I'm saying that the prices are different in the market and that there are affiliate stations selling as low as 499 Naira, which is different from the price listed by the NNPC. So it wouldn't be that accurate to stock. say that NNPC decides the cost for every other affiliate NNPC station. NNPC decides this cost because NNPC is the sole importer. Every other uh, uh, you know, uh, distributor or seller of the product goes to NNPC to bring, uh, to bring in. So NNPC, who is the sole importer, when it determines other, uh, other uh, sellers, wait for NNPC, because NNPC has a comparative advantage because they are so important. So that distributor channel is still valid with where they were still a government corporation. They are still using them even as a private uh, as a private entity. So their imports, they have the, you know, the latitude of determining the price they sell at their filling station because they know the uh, profit margin they have where they import, uh, where they import that refined product. So it's a single source. It's single sourcing. In procurement, it's called single sourcing. They actually went there. Other people go to NNPC to buy. So they wait for NNPC to fix their margin. Well, if NNPC I, fixes I, I, his margin, they take a cue from that. And that's well, what has been happening. So the GMD can come and say anything he wants to say. If I buy, if I go to NNPC to buy, and then I sell in uh, Lagos, which is a port city, and somebody comes from all the way from Borono to pick the product in, uh, in, uh, in Lagos and goes, then, you know, it will sense different. But let me just bottle very quickly, Mr. Igoke, that is definitely going to change. I mean, this is July, and we understand, according to the NMDPRA, some three other marketers, you know, have now been licensed to start importing petroleum products from this month. So I'm sure that that situation will definitely change. But let's bring in uh, 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 someone else into this conversation. Uh, economist Aya Onigbogi, thank you so much for joining on. Uh, very quickly, walk us through what your thoughts are in this regard, particularly when you look at how much Nigerians now have to pay for, you know, a liter of petrol. Uh, thank you very much. Um, as Nigerians, I believe we have, been, we have been on sabbatical where we are buying petrol as low as 85 naira, 165 naira. Uh, the international benchmark for petroleum products in the outside world, if you go to America, if you go to Dallas, you'll be buying petrol for as high as $80, 85, 80 cents, um, 80 cents, 90 cents. But if you go to other places, you can even buy a dollar, you can go buy a liter for as high as $1. And if you look at the value of $1, as we know now, it's going to about 800 So the price we are buying now is... Let me say the international price. Now, let's come back home. Um, we have all enjoyed subsidy. When I say we have all enjoyed, either we like it or not, the big boys within our system have enjoyed subsidy, and that's what has led to the cancellation of subsidy. So it is high time we know as a people that we don't have the leeway uh, for cheap petroleum products, in as much as we have petroleum products in our midst. Even if the petroleum products if it's going to be refined in Nigeria, it will still be as high as 300 naira, 350 naira. And the reason is because we are going to be using, um, um, we'll use um, uh, the trucks, you, 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 we get things from abroad. Most of these are going to be using to even to, 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 to refine them, to be gotten from abroad. And everything will benchmark on dollars. So at the end of the day, having the premium product, we find Nigeria does not mean we will sell it less from the international price. So what we should all realize is that the uh, government has come to stay. What we can ask the government is to say, what is the possibility of, of, of raising the bar of uh, the minimum salary we get in Nigeria? What are the other ways the Nigerian government can make money aside just petroleum products? The ADO, the CMS, those are the things that we the export. What are the things we can do with agriculture? How can our export grow? How can our um, uh, raw material, things that we do from raw, uh, mineral resources, how do we gain more, more money from okay. resources? Government needs to give people incentives 
People that want to go into agriculture, incentive. People that want to do mineral resources, refining, incentive. Because we need more funds to come from other source of revenue outside. The Mr. Nipoke, I guess we'll see how that plays out with the 500 billionaire that has not been approved by the National Assembly. But Mr. Ibuke, how do you respond to this? He's saying that the interest rate would matter after all, even if we uh, get to refine in Nigeria. The problem with us is that we keep on looking at textbook and the print wood institutions, economics uh, mechanisms. Uh, I, I call it voodoo economics. You are, we are mentioning Dallas, we are mentioning Asia countries, we are mentioning different people. How many of those people do this uh, mad, mad, uh, mad economics we do here, where we carry our crude oil? Whereas we are the only OPEC nation doing this. We carry our crude oil and take it to the international market to refine. And when we finish refining it, we bring out the refined products and sell to our citizens. Nobody else does that. So first of all, we need to correct that economic anomaly. You don't export your raw materials, take it out, refine it outside, creating jobs and other things there, and bring it. When you talk about the indices, and that is what you get, that is why we are in Tatars. And that is why we are even subsidizing in this first. So we don't need subsidy in the petroleum industry if our refineries are working. So, so there is misplacement of priority in terms of policy direction. And that is what we are having here. The first part policy is to ensure that we have attained local refining capacity for the local needs. And when you get, attend that, we don't even need to talk about what anybody is selling in Dallas or what All anybody right. is selling in, in, in Pyongyang or mm. what anybody is selling in Seoul. We are talking about what the God has blessed Nigerians with and we have it in abundance. So You're saying that we have to get the local refinery fire. working. I'm afraid we have to go now, gentlemen. Unfortunately, Mr. Uh, uh, Unibogi, we could not get you to connect earlier. But just before we go, in a minute, what should we be doing in the short term, particularly seeing you know, how Nigerians are reacting? Uh, uh, hello. Let me, let me, quick, let me quickly create uh, on Dawson. If you go to America... They buy petroleum products for abroad. At the same time, they too, they have where they get their raw material. In Saudi Arabia, the cost of a liter is $0.6. dollars It's 0 0.6. In America, it's 0 0.8. Okay. And you know what 0 0.8 means? 0 0.6 even in Saudi Arabia, mm. that they have these petroleum products. It will still go up. That's what I'm telling you that. Because we have petroleum products does not mean that it should not be it is, it, is, it is an international commodity. And international commodity means that you can sell to anybody. In Saudi Arabia, that have oil, like Nigeria, they sell for $0.6. So if, I, if America they sell 0 0.8, what I'm trying to say basically is that either we produce here or not, either we manufacture, either we refine it here or not, okay. the price will still go up. There's not always enough time to explore this. I guess we'll get back to it in the coming days. Ayoni Bogi is an economist and public affairs analyst. Ambrose Igboke is chairman in Ogo State Chapter of the Guild of Public Affairs Analysts. Gentlemen, thank you so much for uh, joining us on the program this evening. That's our show today. The program returns to your screen 6 p.m. tomorrow, but you can watch this again at midnight and at 6 a.m.